Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're continuing our Planet Zoo career mode. We're doing the Madagascan Simian Conservation Project. I think that's what it's called at least. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be looking at a lot of different primates and having some fun in Madagascar. So let's get it. Here we go. So beautiful, this one. Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> the zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary where we're doing vitally important conservation work, not just for apes, but for all kinds of species. But apes, well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are, and yet, the way the world treats them is like, well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> True that. Anyway, I that's guess. why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in a right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Madagascar then? Bit warm for my tastes, to be honest. Anyway, this is Bernie's primate sanctuary. It's not just primates, though. We've got all sorts of animals. So why don't we go and have a look at some of them, eh? We'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs. They're the ones that look like they should be in a Shakespeare play. <laughs> Come on, let's head over to them. All right, so I think I'm pretty much taking over from now. So this one is a lot of, um, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of them talking, a lot of Bernie and a lot of, uh, oh, this is embarrassing. I'm horrible with names, really. I don't know why I wanna call her Phyllis. That's definitely, definitely not her name. Nancy, a lot of Bernie and a lot of Nancy talking and then towards the end, it's, it's gonna get a little bit more free roam. Um, yeah, so the thing is, I played through this once and the recording did not, well, it didn't exist, it didn't record. That's basically what I'm trying to say. I guess I did a little too much testing before I started and I messed up and it didn't record. So, yay, okay, here we go again though. I, I do like this one, so I don't think it's gonna be too bad. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's look at those Red lemurs. lemurs are found in the rainforests of Masoala. That's in northeast Madagascar. They can Ooh, actually live anywhere from a Siamese one. 25 years. Fancy that, eh? Okay, oh. when you're ready, let's go find our Borneo orangutans. Baby. Oh, oh, woo. Oh my god, it's possessed. Okay. Let's get out of there. The Bornean orangutan is such a marvelous creature. They're always a big favorite at any zoo they feature in. And they're also the biggest tree-dwelling animal on the planet. <laughs> Assuming you don't count any lions that got stuck up one. Oh, why don't you take a better look at them? Open up their information <laughs> panel and go into the animal camera. Ah, oh, he's a beauty. Just incredible. When you're ready, let's go and have a look-see at some of our beautiful bonobos. <laughs> They're quite the characters. Agon. All right, bonobos over here, it would seem. I mean, let's just have a look real quick down here, because this zoo is beautiful, in my opinion. Uh, well, that seems a little dangerous, but apart from that, it is really gorgeous. The way they've done it is... Basically, yeah, put everything up on stilts. So it's all up here for the guests. And then, boom, down under, we have all of the staff pathing. Well, more or less all of it. it it's really very, very cool. Uh, I'm so impressed with this one. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, let's go through the zoo. Let's get that away. Whoops, here we go. Excuse me, my handling of this is not, not great. See here. Oh dear! It looks like we've oh, arrived no. just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. 
And wouldn't you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. Select the habitat boundary to bring up the habitat information Whoops. panel. Now, we'll need a vet to recapture that escaped bonobo. Okay. But it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire oh, a replacement. Here he is. Sharpish. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area. Great. Now let's deal with our escapee before they can cause too much havoc. Use the animal alert <laughs> to jump to the escaped bonobo. As you can see, the barrier's collapsed. Someone's taken their eye off the ball, obviously. Let's get this one replaced. Select ah, the barrier we and then we'll edit it. Delete the broken section of barrier and replace it with a brand spanking new one. Good. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb-proof barriers to the top. That way the bonobos won't be able to climb out. Just make sure you've got the correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. Done. Nicely done. And I think it's high time we unbox those bonobos, wouldn't you mm. say? Yes, you are the right. The poor mites will get sad if we leave them in Whoops. there for too long. Select the habitat barrier to bring up the habitat information panel again. Huh? So, it turns out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. We'll need to hire oh a couple my. of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. You see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful <gasps> things around the zoo, Arctic but thing. one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. Right. Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble, and fall down. And before you know Yay. it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area again. Gosh, we have been busy, haven't we? Good work there. Seems like it's I'm hot. for a cuppa. Oh, I think Bernie wants a word with you. <laughs> oh, I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escape bonobo. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. And more importantly, without the animals stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. You see, another key responsibility for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment items, additional information for our education resources, enhanced breeding programs, and improvements to food quality. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the animal's food, not the vet's. <laughs> It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, research is a key part of running your zoo. In order for a vet to undertake research, they require a research center. And once again, that's something that this zoo is missing. So let's build one. I've marked out an area for you to put it. Oh, wow. Ah, I love the animations of the animals. It looks really cool. And this arboreal feeding platform is really cool too. I wonder what level theirs is at. Food grade two, yeah. Can tell. All right, let's get that uh, research center over here. Now, you've probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research center. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell. So we're able to place our new building inside of it. If you select the research center for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research center to the existing building. Okay, click to add it to the building. Oh, but that won't place it in just yet, though. First, we'll need to rotate our research mm -hmm. center so it automatically connects to the path when we place it. Right. Splendid work. Now that we have a brand spanking new research center, we can give our vets something to do in there. Oh, by the way, it's worth noting that the vets will only do research when they're not required to do any other jobs. That said, you can change what jobs a vet does via their information panel. But let's not worry about that just now. So... Let's get our vet researching ring-tailed lemurs. Go into the zoo section and select vet research. Actually, thinking about it, I'm not sure we've got any education boards or speakers by the lemurs habitat. Let's head over there and add some, so our guests can learn all about the furry little delights. <laughs> all right, let's see now. Right over here. 
First off, let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or, if you like, pop them down on a stand. Okay, now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. And from the drop-down list, select Ring-Tailed Lemur. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. I was. When you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much. Okay, now that we've done the education boards, let's pop down a pair of speakers. Speakers play audio to the guests so they can learn while they look at the animals instead of having to go through the laborious process of reading. Oh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's important not to put the speakers too close together. If you do, the guests won't be able to understand what's being said. Now, yeah. we simply need to link the speakers to the ring-tailed lemurs, yep. just like you did with the education boards. Yeah, not the prettiest solution, but an effective one. So that's what we're going for now. Fantastic. Oh, it's worth remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. They won't do much good without it. Ooh, Actually, look at that. It looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. We'll need to collect the results. We can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into the vet research area. Go on, collect your research rewards. Yay. Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. <laughs> sure. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. Some animals, like lemurs, will have a climbing need. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space. Look at the and baby. And you can fulfill that requirement by building them a climbing frame. Let's find out how much more climbing space our lemur friends need, shall we? Select one of them and bring up their information panel. Next, click on the Terrain tab. Oh, and no. Now, as you can see, the lemurs need quite a lot more climbing space. But as it happens, I've already got a climbing frame blueprint built for you. So you can either pop that down or build one yourself from scratch. By the way, it's not always just climbing needs that you have to worry about. Other animals might need a certain amount of water in their habitat so they can go for a swim. They certainly do keep us on our toes. See here? How about that? Oh, a little that's floaty? A great climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely love it. Do you know what would make them even happier though? Nicer food. But that's true of all of us, though, isn't it? You can unlock better quality food for animals through research. Luckily, we've already unlocked some for the lemurs, so all that remains is to make sure they get served it from now on. Let's bring up the habitat information panel by selecting the lemur habitat. This is one thing I think worth mentioning. If you click the habitat here, where it is shared between two different habitats, you're not going to get the stuff that you need. This is just something that took me a little bit to figure out. It's not a, a horribly difficult thing, but it's just worth noting. Lovely. But if you do now click here, the animals tab. yep, obviously it definitely there helps. We go. As you can see, we can set the food quality in here. Just click on the drop down menu and select grade two food quality. Grade two food quality. My mouth's already watering. So, a new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. Now, I think it's time we looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities. Releasing animals into the wild. Yay. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Well, their age is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidates will have a high fertility gene. 
And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo, because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. And what's more, the animals you can adopt will be of a higher quality. So, with that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> I'd like you to find Ageng, the Bornean orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the Just habitat fine. barrier, go to the animals tab in the habitat information panel, and find him in the animals list. Here he is. I guess we're releasing him into the wild. He does have great stats. And wow. Okay. The orangutans are okay. Worth investing in, I think. I know it's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild. And he's a wonderful candidate for release. Young, strong, and fertile. Excellent work there. You definitely got potential, you know. Ah, I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring-tailed lima. I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more aldebra. Tortoises. <laughs> okay, so far we've done a lot of work with habitat animals, but now it's time to learn all about exhibit animals. Yeah. Let's build a brand new exhibit. I've marked an area for our new exhibit. How about we head over there? Lovely. Now let's build a new exhibit in the gap that's been left. Just add it to the building like we did with the research center earlier. Then pop it into the gap. All right. Pop it in. Oh, 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 okay, okay, hold on. This is being weird. I wonder. Perfect. The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. How about a Gila monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. There we go. Just as we do with habitat animals, we need to send the Gila monster to the exhibit. Click on the exhibit to send it there. When you send an animal to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready are. for them. So let's finish it off. We'll start by adding some enrichment items. Click on the exhibit to bring up its information panel. As I'm sure you know by now, you can unlock more enrichment levels by having one of your vets do some research. Now we'll also need to set the temperature and humidity in the exhibit. These are vitally important for keeping our Gila monster happy and comfortable. Click on the climate tab. Let's Here, research you can that. see the Gila monster's desired temperature and humidity. You can change both of these by adjusting the dials below. Make sure it's going to be nice and cozy. All right. Is that too much? Is that going to be too much? That's oh, no, we're fine. And the last thing we need to look at is setting up the different windows. So click on the Windows tab. Right. There's also an exhibit education board. Yeah. Pop them down near your exhibit to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. Just want to get this one as well. Uh, two? Yep. Another 3D one. Yeah, they look so good. Whoops. Wait, was it this one? Yep. Awesome. And a education board. Uh, no. No. Oh, come on. No, really? Come on. There we go. Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Right. They're venomous? Now, I've got a bit of a big job for you. Yikes. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. You'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Go on, off you pop. I'll check in with you when you're almost done. 
All right, so this is where we get a little bit more of leeway. So I'm thinking we'll start by popping down exhibit habitats. Now I know there are two spots where we are good to go to put in some more animals. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so this one's already empty. Now we gotta check what, uh, what animals do we already have of exhibit animals. Oh, here we go. So yeah, no species assigned. So we got the Gila monster, the giant burrowing cockroach, and the lesser and Tilean iguana. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Let's see what's available. So we had this one. Goliath frog, we don't have that one. Let's have it then. Adopt you, send you. Wait, wait, nope, here we go. Send you into there. All right. And we'll just get your spot here ready for you. You actually seem to be quite happy with everything as is. Do you have any? You do not. Okay. Um, let's do just divide up your windows like in the other place. What do we have in here? The cockroach. Just one little cockroach right there. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, number four, there you go, that looks neat. All right, let's just check, nope, nothing unlocked for you. That's okay though, so this one, and then I think it's over towards this way, uh, Nope, not right here. Oh, hold on. Yeah, okay, it's over towards this way because it's, it's definitely near this place where you're kind of semi-obviously supposed to put the next bit right here. Look at that. Let's get into here. Facilities, exhibit, and put you... Whoops, not what I wanted. Uh, uh, there. There we go. I think I'll just... Add these two, move them on over. Perfect, and one more of these. And let's see, what did we have it here? Doop -a doop -a doop, Gila monster. Oh, it's confusing to look at. Oh, uh, I don't think we had the snail, right? We had the cockroach. All right, let's get the snail. Let's get this one, why not? Excellent. So, how are you doing? Not great. Let's just take that down a notch and, I don't know, like 60? Three? That's a bit not meant to go 52. Perfect. All right. Do you have anything in here? Let's give you a rock pile. Should make you pretty happy. All right. All right.